I hate the process of this. I, I just there's there's really nothing I like about the the working out or, or or purposely waking up early to do this stuff. Okay, but I love the result. So the big question is this: How are pitching coaches like us, who aren't lazy and driven by our ego, who actually care about getting every player better? How do we coach in a way that lets us break free from the status quo, see things differently, and impact each one of our players for the better, all while changing the landscape of this game? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Andy Powers, and welcome to the Pitching Secrets Podcast. Good morning, everybody. It's Andy again, and yeah, I am saying good morning because as I'm recording this, it is currently 545 in the morning. I've been up for about the last hour and a half or so. Um, already, uh, taken the dogs out and, uh, let them stretch their legs and then, uh, came over to TPI to get a workout in. And, uh, you know, it kind of inspired me to today's topic, which I wanted to talk about as far as results versus process. You know, this is so much in line with what we do in baseball anyways. And, uh, I was listening to a, an interview the other day by a gentleman named Tim Grover. If you're not familiar with Tim, um, I wasn't either. Uh, until the other day. And I, like I said, I was just introduced to him. I just happened to be listening to some people that I like. Um, and uh, just so happened that they uh, were interviewing this guy. And turns out that Tim was and is uh, a personal trainer, uh, mental performance coach and, and physical trainer to some of the biggest names in sports history. Uh, I'm not going to go into a long, deep uh, resume on Tim, but I strongly encourage you to look him up. Uh, I was so um, inspired and impressed with what he uh, was saying in the interview and what he uh, what he's done. Uh, he's written he, he's written written <laughs> he's written a book called Relentless. And in fact, as I'm recording this, I'm supposed to get that book delivered to me today. In fact, I'm, I'm very excited. It's probably the most excited I've been about a book um, that has been sent to me. And uh, so anyways, uh, but, but one of the things with Tim is in, in a very short is that uh, he was a college basketball player and uh, realized that he wasn't as good as he needed to be to move on to the next level, so the NBA. And uh, but he wanted to stay in basketball, so he decided to start uh, learning about kinesiology and, and the way the body works. And he he uh, wanted to start uh, staying in as a trainer. And so uh, as he started to learn and and, uh, and get better at what he was doing, he uh, he lived in Chicago. He wrote a letter to basically everybody in the front office uh, of the Chicago Bulls, and he wrote a letter to every single player on the Chicago Bulls except. Michael Jordan, uh, because even though Jordan wasn't who exactly who he turned into and became, he was still a superstar. Uh, it was a budding superstar at the time, and uh, Tim's Tim's you know his idea he says is that Jordan didn't need him. He was already on a, you know way way uh, better. Well, after some uh, after some relentless pursuit, all of a sudden he gets a phone call from uh, one of the uh, athletic trainers for the bulls and kind of does this interview with him of, of kind of getting a little bit better idea of who he is, what he's about. And then it turned into another interview with somebody else and another interview with somebody else and maybe a coach or so, and then somebody in the front office. And so long story short, the next thing, you know, after going through six or seven different interviews with people in the bulls organization, as, as he tells the story, he finally got a call and said that, uh, Michael would like to meet with you after practice today. And this was the one guy he did not send anything to. Uh, and so after practice that day, he goes and uh, meets with Michael. And he's sitting there. And, they, and again, he goes through another, uh, another interview. And at the end of the interview, Jordan tells Tim he'd give him 30 days. So basically, you have a month to impress me. Well, 30 days turned into 15 years. And Tim Grover became the guy for Michael Jordan. And uh, there's even a point where, where Jordan tells Tim, I don't pay you to train me. I pay you to tr not train anybody else. So powerful. And what Tim realized is he said that the guys that, that, that are operating at a higher level know that they must seek out additional coaching. They must seek out mentors and trainers. They must seek out people that are going to help elevate them even more. So the one guy he thought he didn't need to send the information to ended up being the guy and the only guy that 
sought out his expertise and his help because Jordan, he wasn't operating on it where I'm really good. I don't need anybody. He was operating at a level saying I'm really good and I need to be even better. And I'm looking for those people that can help me become even better. And so that, that was, that, that was the, you know, like I said, the reader's digest version of that, but it plays right into, um, what I want to talk about today as far as the process and the results. And it talks about, you know, also for like, for me, what I've done, I guess you could say most of the time that I am a morning person, although, um, it's been known for me to stay up long, long hours of the night, uh, long after everybody else in the family has gone to bed. And, but I don't usually have too much of a problem getting up in the morning or early on and, you know, four thirty, five o'clock. I did that because again, as I started to, uh, follow, learn, uh, read about other guys in different possible, you know, most likely different industries, business, personal training, whatever, that the most successful people, uh, get up early. They get up early and they get a lot of their day done before the rest of the world is even woken up. And so I've, I'm sitting here, you know, saying, okay, well, if I want to be playing at that level, then I need to start getting up early and, and getting to work. And I'm going to tell you that, uh, there's been a lot of mornings where I don't like it. I don't like to work out. Um, but I'm doing it because I know that it's good for me. Uh, I'm doing it because, uh, you know, uh, I'm getting a little soft around the edges. <laughs> okay. I, I want to lose a little bit of weight. Uh, I know that there's a lot of benefits to it, but it also, the, the part about it is that, and, and maybe you've done the same thing, but the, the worst part to me personally about, about a workout is not so much the waking up. It's the start. It's the beginning. That sucks. I hate it, but I just got to kind of grind through it because what I also know is that when I get to the other side of it and I'm done, I feel fantastic. I feel so good in so many different ways um, because, you know, I've accomplished something already today. Uh, the, the body's awake, it's firing up, it's moving. Okay. So the, the process, I hate the process of this. I, I just, there's, there's really nothing I like about the, the working out or, or, or purposely waking up early to do this stuff. Okay. But I love the result. And that was also something that I learned from watching the interview with Tim is that, you know, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade, these are just a few of the guys that he, he was a personal coach of. They hated the process, okay? But they understood it, and they were addicted to the result. So they went through the process because of the result. And we always hear in baseball so much that, you know, it's not about the results, it's about the process. And that's true. It is. I've said it a bunch of times myself. It is about the process because let's break this game down to the core fundamentals of what it is. The best players in this game, I don't care if you're a pitcher or a positional player, the best players in this game are the ones that can do the same skill, the same execution of a fundamental over and over again more times than everybody else. You know, Derek Jeter made unbelievable plays. He he was he he was known for the the ball going short into left field towards third base left field line going into the six hole, catching it on the run jumping in the air going away from first and firing it across the you know first base and I'm sure he practiced that you don't make that play unless you practice it. But what Derek Jeter pretty much never made a mistake on was the four hop ground ball right to him. He just fields picks it up and throws it across, and Derek Jeter was able to do that more than probably the shortstop in double-A or triple-A, okay? And that's what I'm talking about. It's about the process. Greg Maddox, I'm sure if you went back and asked him, it was about the process that he did. The games were the, re the, were the reward. Okay? I remember Roger Clemens talking about that the easiest day of his week was the day he pitched because the other six days or four or five days, whatever he did you know, his, his, on his rotation, whatever it was, he absolutely crushed himself, and I'm sure he did not like it. I'm sure he hated most of it, but he understood that that's what he had to do in order to have the level of success during those games. And I'm sure that when you're operating at the at the big league level and you're doing what you're doing at the Roger Clemens, the Nolan Ryan, the Greg Maddox level, when you're playing at that level and you're you're dominating other teams and and doing that, 
the result there is is probably an amazing feeling. So as much as you might hate the process, you have to be addicted to the result. You have to want the result more than anything in the world. And that's what's going to help you get through the process. That's what's going to help justify the process. It's what also is going to what help make you focus on that process and make the process and what you do in that process a lot more meaningful and a lot more, you know, you're not just going through the motions. You're not just, well, I'm going to be here and I'm just going to kind of throw a half ass bullpen and then I'm going to be really good on game day. That's not going to happen. Okay. That, that at best, it's leaving yourself up to luck. And I was told a long time ago by one of my mentors, you never want to leave your career up to luck. So it is about the process. I hate working out in the morning. I just don't like it. And maybe one day that'll change. Maybe that, you know, it just, when you get into it longer and longer, it just becomes so much part of your routine or whatever uh, that, that that'll change. But as I'm talking to you right now, I don't like it. Okay. But what I do like is how I feel afterwards. What I do like is the, 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 the strength that I'll have afterwards. I do like the physique that I know that I'm going to eventually have. I do like the weight loss that I'm going to encourage. Uh, I, I do like the uh, health benefits that I'm going to be getting from working out. Okay. I don't like doing any of it. And that's what I want to encourage you today. So you can sit there uh, as a player or as a coach and, and, and you know, be listening to this or, or you know, say, well, I've got kids that are lazy or whatever. What they are is they're just not, they're not, they're not consumed by the result. They, they don't want to do the work, but they still want the, res, the, the result in the end. Um, that that's going to take some some addressing on your part from possibly different angles because everybody's different. Don't forget about that. Everybody has a different way that they have that you know that motivator button. You know, and I've talked about that motivator motivator button in the past. Some guys you got to you know tune them up. Some guys you got to be a little softer on them. But the one thing that you have to do is you have to be honest with them. And if you can inspire them, if you can get them to want the result more than anything in the world then they're going to understand and be very acceptive of the process. And I think it's totally, totally cool for you to acknowledge to them that they don't have to like it. Okay, You don't have to like it. But what you do have to have is you have to have that result. And then I talked, touched on routine a little bit ago too. So much of what we do in this game also is about routine. And I encourage you to start to establish your routines. Establish those routines with your players and your pitching staff. Get them to start really buying into that daily routine of sitting there and learning what they need to do on a regular basis to just help continue to solidify and in, encourage those good behaviors, those good habits. It just helps get the body ready. It helps get the mind in the right spot um, you know, in, in all those things. But, you know, again, the process is necessary. The process is probably the most important thing in all of this. I remember hearing Augie Garrido talk about it. It's not about the process, it's about the results. Uh, or not, It's not about the results, it's about the process, okay? He's right. I mean, he's right. You know, And I'm not going to sit here and ar argue with Augie Garrido. I, I, I don't think there's a lot of people in the game that has that kind of clout footing or opinion to be able to sit there and, 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 uh, and challenge Augie to that. I'm sure if he was still with us today, he'd be more than happy to have that conversation with you because that was the kind of guy he was. It's the reason he was so receptive to those conversations is why he was who he was. But it wasn't about the result. It was about the process. The results are the opportunity to see how well the process is going. But if you want those highs, if you want those extreme results, you got to have those extreme processes. You've got to be relentless in what else that you do to, to get there. And, uh, and if it sucks, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it, it, the, the guys that are going to be operating at the Michael Jordan, the Kobe Bryant levels, the Derek Jeter levels, they get it. They understand what they've got to do in order to be able to put themselves in a position to be able to perform when it matters at that moment better than everybody else. If you want your guys to do that, you've got to create that same mentality. You've got to help create that same environment where they have an opportunity to do that and do that at a very high level. Okay. So anyways, 
process over results. I think I've uh, talked about it enough. But hey, you know, if you like this uh, podcast, you know, hey, I'd appreciate it. Leave me a comment. Give me a five star review. Love those five stars. If you've got a one star, then uh, you know, keep it to yourself. <laughs> but uh, anyways, no, seriously. But uh, feel free to share this with anybody that you think might uh, benefit from it as well. And uh, I'm gonna see you in the next one. Take care. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Pitching Secrets Podcast. If you want to learn more secrets to enhancing your pitching coach abilities and add to your playbooks, all while breaking free from the current status quo of today's coaching, then I want you to join me in my movement to becoming a pitching boss. To start, I'd like to give you a free copy of my best-selling book called Bullpen Secrets. Now, I already bought a copy of the book for you. I just need to know where you want me to ship it. Go to pitchingboss.com forward slash bullpens and let me know where to ship your free copy today.